us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. setting of the same. Your name is great. Hallelujah. How many of you know that he's a God who does great things? Are you glad you've been redeemed by the blood? Let's sing it this morning. I have been redeemed. Hallelujah. I went down to the crimson 
Hudson River Left my burdens on the shore I went down a sin Came up a saint Died with Christ Now I'm reborn Yes, he washed me with his mercy And he cleansed me in his blood Now I stand complete I have been set free Found life there in the flood Sing it Not the same I am changed Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb By His grace I am saved I'm His child forever I am Hallelujah Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb I'm redeemed by love divine Now I have the living water From the well that won't run dry All the pangs of life have been satisfied By the precious blood of Christ Sing not the same I am changed I'm redeemed Redeemed by the blood It's time to cross that river I'll stand in glorious light When he calls me home I'll fall at his throne Forever worship Christ I'll forever worship Christ I'll forever worship Christ I'll forever worship Christ Thank you, Lord, that we are redeemed. We're washed. We're cleansed. We're forgiven. It's all because of what you did for us at the cross. We're about to come to the table of the Lord in a few moments. But before we do, I I want to introduce a new song to you today. A song that simply talks about the fact that our salvation, our redemption, our our acceptance is not based upon our performance. It's based upon what he finished. He finished it at the cross. It's done. It's complete. And if our faith is in him, His work in us 
was final, it was authoritative, it was complete at the cross. And I want you to worship the Lord this morning as Rachel and Ismael lead us in a beautiful new song that simply says what he's done. Let's worship together as we prepare our hearts. See on the hill of Calvary my Savior bled for me my Jesus set me free and look at the wounds that give me life grace flowing from his side no greater sacrifice what he's done the glory and the honor to the Son. My sins are forgiven. My future is heaven. And I praise God for what He's done. Sing for the freedom He has won. Even death is dead in God, his life has overcome. Speak, say the name above all names, over every broken place. He is risen from the grave. who are helping to serve come quickly you may be seated in this atmosphere of worship what we just sang about is what we celebrate at the table of the Lord we practice what I call believers communion it's sort of like believers baptize baptism if you believe you can participate you don't have to recite creeds or anything like that to me and uh, it's a very special it's a very special day especially for these three Vakulchik students that we baptized last Sunday afternoon at their house who are taking part in communion today for the first time with this body of believers on a Sunday morning. So that, I didn't plan to say that, and I hope that didn't embarrass you guys, but man, what a special day. What a special day today. So let's savor, let's enjoy the table of the Lord as we come together to celebrate what he's done.
one name holds weight above them all. His fame outlasts the earth he formed. His place together lift up our eyes see the king has come light of the world reaching out for us there is no other name there is no other name jesus christ our bow down as we lift him up. There is no other name. There is no other name. Jesus Christ our God. Oh, find hope. Somebody help me say it now. His power has trampled death and grave. Our life found in His name. The greatest name of all. Oh, lift up. Sing it out. The earth will shake and tremble before him. Chains will break as heaven and earth sing. Holy is the name. Holy is the name of Jesus. 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 The earth. The earth will shake. Tremble before him, chains will break. 
is no other name. There is no other name. The name of Jesus. We stand. Oh, it's we usually are seated, and it's easier to serve you when you're seated. I really believe that when we come to the table of the Lord, that there's really a twofold uh, aspect to this. One is certainly to remember. Jesus said, when you, when you take this, remember. Remember me. It's inscribed on the front of our table uh, to, to do this in remembrance of him. So we remember. We remember what he has done for us. We remember his work. We remember, we remember where we were and who we were, how we were. We remember. By the same token, I think that as we take these elements that we're saying, Lord, I still need these. I still need this. I still need the brokenness of your body. I still need your blood to cleanse me. Still need it. I still need it. So if you'll just retrieve that wafer out of the top, you probably already have. Think about this week that you've had. There may have been a rough moment or two. I'm not talking about sinful things. I'm talking about just the brokenness of life. I'm talking about how messed up everything can be sometimes. How hard it is. Broken. It's with that in mind that we, that we hold this wafer in our hand and we break it in our fingertips. I say, Lord, you came through the brokenness of your body to put broken things, broken people, broken worlds back together. And we need it. We still need it. We need it. From the oldest to the youngest, from the person that served the Lord the longest to the one who served the Lord for the shortest amount of time, we need the brokenness of his body to put us back together. So we hold this in our hands, Lord, and we consider, we remember what you have done, how you suffered, what you took on you, so that we could be healed, so we could be put back together. And Lord, we remember that, and we ask you to do the same thing for us today. Heal us, God. Put us back together. Fix us. Help us. We're not just eating this to eat it, Lord, but we're, we're eating it as an act of our faith, as an act of our, of our involvement with you in this process. We're saying, Lord, let the brokenness of your body work in the brokenness of my body today. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, let's eat together. And I can hear you opening that lower portion. That juice represents the blood of Jesus. Now we're talking about God's plan for people that are separated from him because of their sin. We can't, we can't forgive ourselves. We can't wash ourselves. We can't make ourselves right with God. We don't come to church just to try to do better. But we, we remember the power of this blood in our lives as Christian believers, the vast majority of this room, Christian believers who have time and again said, Lord, wash me. And so today we remember all those many times and we say, Lord, wash us again. Wash us fresh. Lord, every sin, every sinful instinct, every sinful impulse, every sinful act, Wash us as we take this cup together. Lord, we just say thank you for your blood. We remember, we remember, we remember. And Lord, we say that we need it still. We need it today. Wash us, make us clean. And we say thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's drink together. Amen. Lead us, Pastor. On a throne of majesty, the Father's will complete. He reigns in victory. Hallelujah to the King. He is worthy to receive all the worship. Oh! 
read this week that God not only hears our prayers, but he listens for them. And you may think, well, that's the same thing. No, when he listens for them, he listens in anticipation, waiting for us. The God of all the universe, the creator of heaven and earth, is waiting on us to come to him, to invite him into our situation. Because he knows that he is the only one that can help us in our time. Amen. And when we pray this morning, we have many that are on our, our list that we send out. I want us to remember um, Jennifer Certain in our prayers. This is Frank Beckton's daughter. And Jennifer is going to go in for uh, brain surgery on Tuesday. And this is hopefully going to help to alleviate the Bell palsy that she's been dealing with for years. And so we want to lift up Jennifer in our prayers today. But there's so many that uh, are on our list that need God's touch in their bodies today. And so let's just pray and just believe God for his amazing healing power to just reach down and touch these bodies today. We just thank you for it. Father, we... We lift you up today, God, and we thank you that there is no other like you. You are the one true living God. It is in you we live and move and have our very existence, oh God. And I thank you, Father, for your grace and your love to our lives, Father, that you not only hear us, Father, but you're listening for us, Father, in anticipation for us to come before you and to just communicate and just to, to build that relationship with you, Lord, to share with you our life. And Father, I thank you so much for the power of your Holy Spirit in our lives today, God. I thank you for the power that brings healing to our bodies today, Lord. And I know that there are so many in this room, and even those that are watching our service today, God, that need a touch in their body. And Father, we pray healing in their bodies today in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would reach down and touch them right now, God, and begin to bring healing and restoration to their bodies in the name of Jesus, and we lift up Jennifer to you today, Father. And we just pray, Lord, as she is preparing for this time, God, that you will just go before her, God, and that you will just uh, give her great strength and, Father, and anticipation and knowing, Father, that you are going to touch and minister healing into her body today and on Tuesday, Lord, as she goes in for this surgery. God, I just pray that you'll bring comfort to her mind and to her heart. Father, to know that your presence is with her, God. And Lord, we pray that you will just do that work that she needs today and to, to bring healing to her body. We thank you for that, God. And in everything, Lord, that we do, Father, I pray that we will just bring glory and honor to your name, God. Let us hear your word today, God, and let us do what you have called us to do, Lord. Let us go forth and, and do the work that you've called us to do, Lord, to love those that you have loved and sent your son for. And Father, we just pray, God, that you will just uh, bless our time together, bless the word as as it comes before us today, God, let it land on good soil. And we thank you for that today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated this morning. We want to continue to worship the Lord in the giving of our tithes and offerings. If our ushers will come today to receive those gifts. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you for your amazing love and grace to our lives. Father, we thank you for what you've given to us, Lord. You have supplied our every need, and we give you praise for that today, Lord. We pray, we pray your blessings upon this offering today, God. Lord, we pray that you will take it and multiply it and use it. And Father, we pray that souls will be saved and lives changed because of the gifts that are given today, Lord. We pray that your blessings will be upon those that give, Lord, minister to their needs, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you as you give today. Just have a couple of announcements uh, for you. Um, first of all, thank you so much for those who have already signed up and had your photos taken. And if you have yet to have your photo taken, you've already signed up, we ask that you would be there 15 minutes prior to your appointment and that you would bring uh, the completed forms and um, if you do not have your forms completed or maybe you forgot those forms 
on the day of your uh, appointment. They will have some extra forms there for you to be able to fill those out. Uh, but if you have not signed up yet, there's plenty of space available, time is available for you to come and have your photo done. But uh, we just, we appreciate so much those of you who have already taken advantage of that. Also, our Thrive Young Adult uh, group will be meeting today at 3 o'clock at Big Red's Cafe in Kings Mountain. So you want to look forward to that. Pastor Neff. Thank you, Pastor Scott. Ladies, don't forget to sign up for women's meeting this coming Friday night. There's a sign-up sheet in the foyer, uh, but you're going to have breakfast uh, prepared by David Steins, uh, paid for by Men's Fellowship, by the way. Uh, <laughs> and so it, it's going to be good. I, we had it. I still haven't fully recovered from yesterday's men's breakfast. Uh, <laughs> so it's going to be it's going to be good so make sure you're there today is graduate sunday and so we're going to recognize some very very special uh students who have accomplished great things in their lives when i call the name of your graduate if you are here as parents or other family or particular friends with that person uh, we will we will clap and cheer for each one as they make their way forward but will you stand um Will you stand as, uh, as they come if you are a parent or a family member or a particularly close friend? We have one high school graduate today, and uh, this is kind of the odd. Normally we have more high school graduates than we do college graduates, but today we have one high school graduate. Callie Grove, will you make your way to the platform? Can we give it up for Callie and Callie's family? <laughs> yeah. Callie is graduating from Piedmont Community Charter School. You can come all the way up, yeah. Come sort of to this side, Callie, if you don't mind. And Callie, we have a Bible for you. We always give a Bible to our high school graduates, and we're very proud of you. And uh, I just say, use it. You know, let it lead your life. Stay right here with me. And these four college graduates are all very special to me, truly. And... Um, I will have to say the first one especially is especially special, but Savannah Boyce, uh, will you? <laughs> Savannah is graduating from Gaston College with an associate degree in general education. Also. Lainey Johnson Ball, will you make your way to the platform? <laughs> and her family. Lainey is also very special to me. Uh, she is my uh, Rubik's Cube partner in crime, my piano partner in crime, and really just my partner in crime. Uh, but we, we won't give details on that, but, uh, but uh, we're very proud of you. Lainey's graduating uh, from Cleveland College with an Associate of Arts degree, the first of many degrees for her. Addison White, if you'll make your way to the platform. Yeah, there you go. I know you'll think I'm just making this stuff up, but Addison is very, very special to me too. Addison is literally my Puerto Rico daughter. Uh, when we went to the mission field five years ago, uh, she was under the age of 18, so, so papers were signed that for that period of time, I was really her Puerto Rico dad. She was my Puerto Rico daughter, and you'll always be my Puerto Rico daughter. And I'm very proud of you. Addison's graduating from Catawba Valley Community College with an Associate of Applied Science degree in criminal justice. Those are our three associate degree earners. And now I'm gonna invite Megan Gamble if she'll make her way to the platform. <laughs> Megan is graduating from Western Governors University with a MSN, Master of Science in Nursing Leadership and Administration. And, uh, uh, 
<laughs> Megan's the only one up here, with possible exception of Savannah, who has literally saved my life. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, possibly even in Puerto Rico, also on that Puerto Rico team. But you remember the many times I've recounted my COVID testimony when I was at the hospital and was ready to leave, and Megan was texting me like, you are not leaving there. I'm like, well, I'm just going to lay on the floor. And then she's like, you are not laying on that floor. You'll get something worse than COVID. Uh, and, uh, and she would, for eight hours, I was waiting to be seen in that ER that night. It was a tough, tough moment. And uh, she was working in the ER at another hospital, and she would not let me give up. And, uh, and I love you, Megan, and Elijah, and all three of your, your beautiful girls. And um, so this is, I think, a... a a very, very special group. Can we get you guys just kind of walk down this way so Kent can get a good picture of the five of you? And, uh, and then can I let you get one with me over here on, hanging on the end as well? All right, let me get one with me. This one's just for me, maybe. But. Awesome, you guys can be seated. I also want to recognize some excellence in education this morning uh, real briefly, but if you are an educator, uh, a teacher, teacher's assistant, an administrator, um, uh, a custodian, but if you, if you work in the education system at all, would you stand just so, we can, so that we can cheer for all of you, all of our teachers? And, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, principals? Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, that's good. That's good. I'm going to ask Lisa Montgomery to come to the platform. Lisa was the teacher of the year this year at North Belmont Elementary. I do not have an envelope for you, Lisa, <laughs> but we are going to celebrate you. She was the teacher of the year at North Belmont Elementary, and then she was a top five finalist for Gaston County Schools Teacher of the Year. And um, in that process, yeah, all the way up, there you go. In that process, um, a video was prepared as part of that uh, uh, Teacher of the Year for the whole county, and I wanted to play that video for you this morning. Uh, will you give your attention to the screen? My name is Lisa Montgomery, and I'm an academically gifted teacher at North Belmont Elementary School. And I teach because I saw the profound impact that teachers have on the lives of individuals, not only on the lives of my friends and my family, but on me. My favorite part of teaching is watching my students grow. I love seeing them grow academically, but I also love getting to know them as athletes and musicians and seeing their hobbies outside of school and watching them grow as individuals, seeing them become the person that they were created to be. So you collaborated and you figured it out. I love it. I want my students to know that I love them no matter where they go, what they need, Ms. Montgomery's here. They can call me at any point. I'm going to celebrate their wins, and I'm going to help them get through their losses. But at the end of the day, they're always right here, and I love them. Yeah, hang on, hang on. I got one more coming. Look at that. Not going to rush that. Isn't that amazing? Wasn't that a great video? Lisa, I know, walks into that classroom every day saying, Lord, use me. Lord, use me. Even in this process, she was saying, y'all pray for me because we want the Lord to use me uh, in this moment. And um, what, a, what a thing. Uh, James Montgomery also was retired this past year as the principal of Highland School of Technology, Lisa's husband, uh, and, uh, and then went back to Highland as the commencement speaker. But also, I'd like to get Monica Dellinger to make her way to the platform as well. We give it up for Monica. <laughs> yeah, I see y'all back there. That's good. You're right, Frank and Wanda. You're right. Monica, of course, as you know, grew up in this church. Uh, she is the executive director of Community Charter School in Stanley, and um, 
but she was really, you were there from the very beginning of that school, not as, not as the executive director at first, but maybe you were the, the instructional coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then over these past couple of years, two, three, four, how long? As executive director? Two years as executive director and then three years prior to that. This past year, she went through the rigors of uh, building a brand new beautiful campus that you can see on the screen there. Isn't that incredible? In Stanley. And so we're very proud of you as well, Monica, for your tremendous accomplishments in education. And James Montgomery now works for her. Uh, <laughs> and so, so um, yeah, get this picture, Ken, if you will. If you guys step over just a minute. Yeah, well, give it up. Let me get one more thing. Yeah. Very special day. Yeah, I don't normally recognize birthdays, but there are a couple that I want to recognize today because um, they're extra special. Um, first of all, Ron Green uh, sitting. Ron, will you stand for us? Ron turns 84 today. He looks 54. <laughs> Love you, my friend. He looks 54, maybe 44, but he turns 84 today. And so that's delivered with the bitterness that's there. Um, also today, turning 24, um, not in the room right now, I don't believe, because she should be over in kids' church right now, but Mallory Gibby is our next gen associate, and it's her birthday. So we want to give it up for Mallory. And then there's one more, if I'm going to recognize Ron and Mallory, I think I should recognize Becca Boyce, who it's her birthday today as well. So <laughs> happy birthday, honey. Love you. Becca pushed to be here today, uh, not because of her birthday, but because of Savannah's. Uh, <laughs> and the Lord, a little bit the Lord, a lot Savannah. And uh, on Graduate Sunday, I like to preach a message that is somewhat directional or foundational for life, um, but by no means is this exclusively for these graduates, but it is for these graduates. I want to talk to you about faithfulness today, faithfulness. Uh, so you might want to put on your steel-toed boots. <laughs> faithfulness, we're going to read from a passage of Scripture that is not what I would consider to be a, um, a light passage uh, so we're going to do some we're going to do some work today. The case for faithfulness, el caso de la fidelidad. To these five graduates that stood up here just a minute ago, I want you to make a decision in your life, a decision in your life that will pay off in incredible ways. I want you to decide to be faithful. I want you to make that decision. Faithfulness is a choice. La fidelidad es una elección. Faithfulness is a choice. How do we define faithfulness? A couple of things. Faithfulness is lasting loyalty and trustworthiness in a relationship. Also, faithfulness is our unwavering commitment to our promises. Let me tell you, we can trust God to be faithful to us, but can God trust us to be faithful to Him? Lasting loyalty and trustworthiness in a relationship, unwavering commitment to our promises, meeting our obligations, bearing up under our responsibilities. All of that has to do with being faithful. Being faithful. God is faithful. You have to start there. That's not our text. But God is faithful. God is faithful first. The foundation of Christian faithfulness the foundation of our faithfulness lies in the character of God's own faithfulness. The, the Scripture describes God as faithful in Deuteronomy 7. The Scripture describes God as the faithful God in Psalm 89. The Scripture describes God as one who cannot lie in Titus. In Genesis 17, it says that His faithfulness manifests in His covenant promises to Israel. In Lamentations, His faithfulness shows up in his unfailing love for humanity, even in the face of our shortcomings. How about that? His faithfulness shows up. His faithfulness shows up. Augustine 
emphasized this as an attribute of God, saying that God is faithful because he cannot deny himself. God's faithfulness, God's faithfulness is our example. God was faithful first. And God is faithful even if we are unfaithful. God started it. God was faithful first. It's what God demonstrated for us. Romans 5, 8 says, but God demonstrated. But God demonstrated. God demonstrated his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, while we were unfaithful, Christ died for us. He was faithful. So what is the appropriate response of a Christian believer? The appropriate response of a Christian believer is to be faithful to God. Graduates, if you can learn to be faithful to God, your life will be better. I can promise you that. I can't promise you a life with no struggle. I can't, in fact, I'll promise you a life with struggle. I can't promise you a life with no pain. In fact, I'll promise you that your life will have some pain. But if you will learn to be faithful to God, your life will be better. For those who are not graduates, if you can learn to be faithful to God, your life will be better. So I want to give you this message today in a way that you can remember it. Uh, I, kind of, I kind of try, I like sort of to bookmark chapters of the Bible in my mind. For example, Matthew 5, 6, and 7 are the Sermon on the Mount. Just, just, that's just something that I, I just always want to know. Matthew 5, 6, and 7, Sermon on the Mount. Luke 2 is what? The birth of Jesus. Yeah, you start, you're getting warmed up. I get it. I get it. Luke 2 is the birth of Jesus. John 3 is Nicodemus. John 4 is the woman at the well. John 5 is the man at the pool of Bethesda. Those three power stories. Man, boom, boom, boom. John 17 is the high priestly prayer of Jesus. Just, that's, that's a great place. Matthew 23 are, 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 is where Jesus just unloads on the Pharisees. If you just ever, if religious people are ever really getting on your nerves, just go to Matthew 23 and the Lord's going to help you because he just unloads. Matthew 23. Woe to you. <laughs> Acts 2 is what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Acts 2 is Pentecost and the birth of the church. Matthew 25. Matthew 25. What's 1 Corinthians 13? Love chapter, yeah. You got it. Hebrews 11. Faith, yeah. Got some scholars in here. Matthew 25 is a chapter that talks about faithfulness in our relationship with God faithfulness in our relationship with God Jesus encourages us in that chapter to be faithful so today I want you to rem remember these three numbers 10 3 and 1 you tracking so far 10 3 and 1 if you can remember those three numbers you can remember this message today 10 3 and 1 graduates you are used to retaining information yeah, I know you already have it, but for everyone else, 10, 3, and 1. Matthew 25, these are not verse numbers. These are not verse numbers. Matthew 25, but these three numbers, 10, 3, and 1. First, Jesus talks about 10 bridesmaids. 10 bridesmaids or, or, or 10 virgins. So let's just go to Matthew 25. We're going to start reading. We're going to read the whole chapter. I told you we're going to do some lifting today. We're going to read the whole chapter, not right now, but by the time we're done. Matthew 25, starting at verse 1, reading through verse 13. Jesus talks about 10 bridesmaids. Let's read. I'm in the New Living Translation. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 bridesmaids who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The five who were foolish didn't take enough olive oil for their lamps, but the other five were wise enough to take along extra oil. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, they were roused by the shout, Look, the bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. All the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. Then the five foolish ones asked the others, Please give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. But the others replied, We don't have enough for all of us. Go to a shop and buy some for yourselves. But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. 
Then those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was locked. Later, when the other five bridesmaids returned, they stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back, Believe me, I don't know you. So you too must keep watch, Jesus says, for you do not know the day or hour of my return. So now, there's, there's, some, there's some eschatology uh, last days, end times, prophetic kinds of things embedded in this passage of Scripture today, but I'm not going to locate on the prophecy chart for you this morning. But I do want to capture this idea. D.A. Uh, Carson writes in the Expositor's Bible Commentary, because I had to go do some research, what's the deal with these bridegrooms, I mean bridesmaids, or um, these, these virgins? It's just, it's just weird. Isn't it? I mean, what, the, the lamps, all of it. What it I was trying to make some sense of this, and this is what he writes. Normally, the bridegroom, with some close friends, left his home to go to the bride's home, where there were some various ceremonies going on. After these ceremonies at the bride's home, not wedding ceremonies, but other things, preparatory uh, events, after these ceremonies were concluded, there would be a procession back to the bridegroom's house through the streets at night, back to his home, in the dark, back to his home. These ten virgins in this passage may be bridesmaids who have been assisting the bride, and they expect to meet the groom as he comes from the bride's house. Everyone in the procession was expected to carry his or, own, his or her own torch or his or her own lamp. Those without a lamp would be assumed to be party crashers. So the festivities, which might last for several days, would formally start in this way at the groom's house. So they all have their lamps. They're all waiting for this to happen. We see something similar to that when we have weddings here sometimes. Usually the nursery area is where we set up for the sort of the bridal area for, uh, for, the, for the girls to be getting ready. And the bride's over here, but also all the bridesmaids are over here. And also the mother of the bride and, and maybe some, a favorite aunt. And then there's a hairdresser or two that are back there. And I mean, there's, just a, there's a lot happening over here in this, in this nursery suite. On a, on a wedding day and the men that are associated with that wedding are usually either in the office or standing in this hallway out here with absolutely nothing to do. But it's sort of like that, that they're waiting. They are invited. They're, 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 you know, they, there's a participation that is expected of them, but they're going to need a burning lamp. There's going to be a nighttime procession through the street and for them it's sort of their ticket in and for them to be accepted they're going to need to have a burning lamp and five of these ten took great care to make sure that their lamp would be burning when they needed it to be burning five of them had it had made provision for enough oil for their lamp and five of them Jesus says were foolish they did not attend to the provision that they needed for their lamp. Five, half, half were foolish and half were faithful. I mean, why don't we get everyone on this side of the church to stand right now? Just, just you guys remain seated. You guys stand. You guys are, yeah, you, this, this section two. You haven't been left out. Y'all, this group got in by the skin of your teeth. Uh, I mean, just look at that. What, what if, it, and I just arbitrarily picked this side, guys. No, no offense. It wasn't because of you, David Watley. It wasn't. <laughs> but what if half our faithful and the other half are foolish. You may be seated. What a tragic thing that would be. What if half of the people in your family are faithful and half the people in your family are foolish? What if half the people at your place of work are faithful and half are foolish? Or half at your school are faithful and half at your school are foolish? Or what if half in our community are faithful and half are foolish? Half 
lost out. Half had everything fall apart on them because they were not faithful to their responsibilities to this lamp that provided them entrance to this wedding celebration. Half missed out. Now let's talk about three servants. Three servants. There were ten bridesmaids. Now, three servants. We're going to pick up in verse 14, that very next verse. Jesus is still talking. This is him. Everything we're reading is in the voice of Jesus. Again, he says, verse 14, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. He gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last, dividing it in proportion to their abilities. He then left on his trip. The servant who received the five bags of silver began to invest the money and earned five more. The servant with two bags of silver also went to work and earned two more. But the servant who received the one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. After a long time, their master returned from his trip and called them to give an account of how they had used his money. The servant to whom he had entrusted the five bags of silver came forward with five more and said, Master, you gave me five bags of silver to invest, and I have earned five more. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. So now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. The servant who had received the two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest, and I have earned two more. The master said, Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. Then the servant with the one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man. Harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money. So I hid it in the earth. Look, here's your money back. But the master replied, you wicked and lazy servant, if you knew I harvested crops I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. Then he ordered, take the money from this servant and give it to the one with the ten bags of silver. To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Now throw this useless servant into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Three servants. Three servants. He gave to each of them, first of all, he gave them gifts, he gave them money, he gave them things that belonged to him. He wasn't giving them what belonged to them, the receivers of the gifts. These three servants, they were the servants. He was the master. These gifts that he's providing are gifts that belong to him already and at his pleasure. And according to his will, he gives them what he chooses to give them and he gives them according to what they can handle each one according to each one's ability these gifts are deposited one got five one got two one got one but they all got something look at verse 29 again to those who use well what they are given even more will be given and they will have an abundance But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. That's a powerful verse in our Bible. Matthew 25, 29. Two different groups. Those who use well and those who do nothing. We're talking about faithfulness this morning. Two different ways to respond to what God gives us. He's going to give us things. He has deposited gifts in every person sitting in this room. God has given us something. I don't know if you look more like somebody who got five, or if you look more like somebody who got two, or if you look more like somebody who got one. It's not in the scripture, but I did hear someone say, you get what you get and you don't pitch a fit. 
It's probably in there somewhere. You've been given something. And with that something that you've been given, you can, you can use it well or you can do nothing. That choice is yours. Remember, I said faithfulness is a choice. La fidelidad es una elección. Faithfulness is a choice. It's a decision that you make. You can use well or you can do nothing. And if you spend your life, graduates, if you spend your life doing nothing, it will cost you something. Students, if you spend your life doing nothing, it will cost you something. Older adults, I'm just waving generally, I wasn't. If you spend your life doing nothing, it's going to cost you something. We can use our gifts well, or we can do nothing. Talking about faithfulness, ten bridesmaids, three servants, and one life. One life. As I look across this room, I see a great evenness of distribution that each one of us has one life. One life. One life. Picking up in verse 31, Jesus says, But when the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the angels with Him, then He will sit upon His glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in His presence, and He will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep at His right hand and the goats at His left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was... Get ready for it. Can you believe all of this is in the same chapter? For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then these righteous ones, these are the ones that just received this, these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink or a stranger and show you hospitality or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Then the king will turn to those on the left and say, Away with you, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his demons. I know this is a light passage for Graduate Sunday. For I was hungry, and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty, and you didn't give me a drink. I was a stranger, and you didn't invite me into your home. I was naked, and you didn't give me clothing. I was sick and in prison, and you didn't visit me. Then they will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and not help you? And he will answer, I tell you the truth, when you refused to help the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were refusing to help me, and they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous will go into eternal life. What is, what is Jesus saying? One life. One life. A, a theme emerges from this chapter. What chapter? Matthew 25, that's right. A theme emerges from this chapter. Ten bridesmaids, three servants, one life. Ten bridesmaids, three servants, one life. And they, they're, they're all saying some of the same thing. Bridesmaids, bridesmaids, maintain your relationship. Put into your relationship what it needs to survive. Make provision for that relationship. This works in a marriage, by the way. It works in every relationship. Every kind of relationship you'll ever possibly have. 
You make provision for that relationship. And if it's true in your marriages and if it's true with your children or with your parents or with your brothers and sisters or with other cousins or people you work with, if it's true that if you make provision for that relationship that the relationship will do well, then it is also true in your relationship with God. We make provision and you can We make provision. Bridesmaids, maintain the basics of your relationship. Servants, use the gifts God gave you. Servants, use the gifts God gave you. I love the promise of that passage where he says, hey, if you'll be faithful in these gifts that I'll give you, you'll have these other expansion gifts. There will be things that you can do now and you'll be able to do other things that you cannot do now simply because you were faithful in the things that you can do now. Does that make sense? If we will be faithful, with these few things, Jesus said it's just a few things. I'm, I, I, I'm asking you to be faithful, but it's, it's just over these few things. It's a reasonable ask. And he's saying, if you'll be faithful with these few things, what we started with, what I've given you, I'm going to let that grow. Not only did the five grow from five to ten, and the two grow from two to four, but at that moment of reception and celebration, the Lord said, I'm going to give you a bunch more on top of that at this point. It didn't stop at ten. Or four. The bridesmaids maintain the basics of your relationship. Servants use the gifts God gave you. And then in this one life that we have, use it to minister to other people. I don't. I don't think it. You, you know, we in 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 Christian life and church life, there are always these great debates about what is what is literal in scripture and what is metaphor or, or, or illustration. But I believe that when Jesus said, feed the hungry, he literally just meant feed the hungry. When he said, give clothes to people, Jackie Adams, where are you, Jackie? Nursery, serving. Jackie manages our clothes closet. Listen, if you need clothes, you let us know. We've got a clothes closet that is just packed with nice stuff. Shoes, clothes, suits. No charge. Jackie Adams will give you a personal tour of that place. Listen, all the, all the stuff that gets donated that's not worth very much, she takes all that to goodwill. Our closet is pristine, man. It's better than Walmart, I can promise you that. When Jesus said, give people who don't have clothes, give them clothes, and if they're sick, visit them. If they're in prison, visit them. I think, how can we read that anyway other than just literally to find people to help? Faithfulness. Bridesmaids, maintain the basics of your relationship. Take it seriously. Some of what the Lord's always said. Exodus chapter 20. Another bookmark chapter. Exodus chapter 20. Jesus, or the Lord said, don't take my name in vain. Don't, don't, just, don't just call yourself one of mine. Don't just yap about it. Don't just post about it. Take it seriously. If you're going to say you're with me, then be with me. And that's what Jesus is saying. Bridesmaids, tend to your lamps. Servants, use your gifts. And in this one life that we've been given to live, use that life to minister to people who are in need. You're going to spend your life 
You're going to spend your life. You're going to spend it, just like money, just like money in an account. You're going to spend it. There's not a one of us that's going to be, that's going to be here 100 years from now. Hate you had to hear it that way. We're all at some part of the process of spending our lives. You don't spend a life a whole life at a time. You spend a life one moment at a time, one minute at a time, one hour at a time, one day at a time, one week, month, and those turn into years, and those turn into decades, until at some point you'll be looking back over a whole life that you have spent. Can you come to the end of your life and read Matthew 25 without sorrow? Or would we read that and say, what a waste. What a waste. I didn't take it seriously. I didn't do right. I didn't do enough. I didn't do well. I did nothing. It's our choice. Choose faithfulness. Choose faithfulness. Choose faithfulness. Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote the book, The Cost of Discipleship. He said, Faithfulness is the primary Christian virtue. It is the soil out of which all the other Christian virtues grow. Simply by being faithful. Listen, there are going to be moments in your life where you do not have the answers, but you can be faithful. There are going to be moments in your life where you are hurting, but you can be faithful. Just one foot in front of the other. You can be dealt grievous wounds, and you can be faithful. Not that hard. I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to. I love that passage that the Lord, the Lord's faithfulness shows up. The Lord's faithfulness shows up. May we mirror that and allow our faithfulness to show up in our relationship with the Lord. Will you stand? I had some other stuff. I'm, but I think you get it. Ten, three, and one. Ten bridesmaids, three servants, one life. And our altar call this morning is going to be this. I just want us to sing this simple little song. We have the lyrics for you. It's a prayer. You're singing it to the Lord. Only you can sing it for you. But will you commit yourself to the Lord with these simple words? Lead us, Pastor. Faithfulness, faithfulness is what I long for. Faithfulness is what I need. Faithfulness, faithfulness is what you want from me. Take my heart. Transform it, take my will, conform it to yours, to yours, O oh Lord. Say faithfulness, faithfulness, faithfulness is what I long for. Faithfulness is what I need. Faithfulness, faithfulness is what you want from me. Take my heart and form it. Take my mind, transform it. 
Take my will, conform it to yours, to yours. Take my heart, take my heart, conform it. Take my mind, transform. Take my, take my heart. Come on, sing it out. And fall. Yeah, that sounds good. Take my heart. Transform me. Take my will. Conform me to yours, to yours. Come on, to yours. To yours, to yours, oh Lord, to yours, to yours, to yours, oh Lord. Lord, that's the prayer of our heart this morning. We hear that call, we hear that challenge, we hear that charge, Lord, simply to be faithful. God, I pray for these graduates. Uh, I truly do love them. What a great group. God, I pray that you would keep your hand on them all the days of their life. Lord, that you would use them. Lord, that you would open doors for them. Lord, that you would bless them, that you would give them provision and many, many gifts on top of what you've already given to them. God, I pray that you would help them to become leaders, Lord, that they would lead themselves and then help to lead their families and then help to lead their communities, Lord. God, raise them up to help lead this church in the name of Jesus. Use them for your glory, Lord. I pray that you would place this in their heart in such a way that it never goes away, that they would simply be faithful. I'm not asking them to be faithful to a person. I'm not asking them to be faithful to a church. I'm asking them to be faithful to God. Faithful to you. Use them, God, I pray. But God, I pray that same prayer for everyone in this room and for everyone who will ever watch this video online. God, may we be faithful to you. May we take our relationship with you seriously. And Lord, will you use it for your glory? We'll bring you what we have. It's yours already. It's yours. And we say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can we make our declaration together? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Psalm 1914. Love you guys. Go with God.